Servus, my dear brew friends. I'm Hans from Munich, Bavaria, and I'm going to brew the beer with you. So this is my very first English language video and um, I did it because um, what I'm going to do today is very special and I haven't read um, a lot about it. It's uh, basically cold mashing. So I'm not mashing with a, with your typical mash profile with a um, combination rest or um, actually um, I'm, I'm not heating the mash at all. The mash is running for, I don't know yet, probably a couple of hours at um, at I think 46 degrees Fahrenheit or something. It's like eight or to 10 degrees centigrade. And um, it's just basically, it's not really a mash actually. It's just dissolving all the, all the <laughs> um, simple sugars from the mold. And um, yeah, well, the, the stuff that gave, gives the, the mash the taste and the color. And it's basically just um, steeping it. And um, this is going to produce a very low gravity beer, which is supposed to have um, all the what well, most of the properties of a, of a problem properly mashed beer like uh, like a full body and um, um, what the taste obviously but it's producing a low gravity and a low alcohol beer and um, I've never read anything about this a couple of days ago I read something on on reddit homebrewing about it and I, I already I immediately knew that I have to try it um, I'm going to link all the stuff um, in the in the info section of this video so you can uh, there's also a an, an article by breeze malt um, that describes some some theories and they obviously know a lot more about uh, the theories of mashing than me um, so I hope um, you're going to enjoy my little experiment and probably this inspires you to do the same and I really I personally hope to get a, a very good low gravity and low alcohol beer <laughs> Today I'm going to brew um, my standard um, American pale ale, which I love very much. And um, the only thing I'm going to do is uh, use the cold mash instead of my usual mash I use for uh, my ale beers. And actually I brewed um, this exactly the same recipe last week with my standard mash. So it will be a very good opportunity to um, compare those two beers. This is my um, standard American pale ale recipe, which is based on a recipe of the Sierra Nevada pale ale, but I have fine-tuned it to my own taste and use a mix of um, Denali and Cascade hops. So now I'm here with my uh, Spidel Braumeister and um, I'm going to start steeping my malts. Um, I'm just going to fill up the um, the Braumeister with my water from my tap, from the with the water from my tap. Um, it's at uh, 46 degrees Fahrenheit at the moment, which is um, about 8 degrees centigrade because it's winter here in Munich. And um, I'm going to um, let the Braumeister, Brewmaster, um, they shouldn't call it the Brewmaster, um, let it run on a manual mode, not in a programmed. Um, um, brew mode um, because I don't know how long I will have to steep um, the, the mash let's call it a mash um, a cold mash although it is not a mash and um, yeah and um, I will take readings every couple of um, or like every hour or so and um, check out um, the, the gravity points I have reached yet and then I will decide on the go um, when to stop the cold mashing and then proceed just um, cooking the um, the wort and adding the hops just like you would normally do with um, uh, during a brew day. So let's start the Braumeister and we're going to see what happens with uh, this cold mash um, beer I'm going to make. I'm really excited to do this. <music> So we're uh, 30 minutes into my cold mash and I'm going to take a gravity reading. And yeah, we're already at 0 0.005 gravity points. So there's definitely some um, sugars getting, um, getting into this mash. So we're now an hour into our cold mash and this means I'm going to take another gravity reading. And yeah, we are now at about 1.08, 1.09 
uh, gravity points so there's more sugar even more sugar dissolved and um, we are not I'm not um, yet at the point where I want to go I hope to reach 1.0 two gravity points or something like this in this range and so we're going to I'm going to let this um, cold mesh run for another hour at least. The temperature of the mesh is um, has leveled off at uh, 12 degrees centigrade or 50 C uh, uh, 53 <laughs> degrees Fahrenheit. The color of the cold mesh beer is actually it's beautiful, beautiful really beautiful and um, I can't really see any difference to um, an ordinary mashed beer. So another 30 minutes into um, my cold mesh and the gravity is at 1.01 pretty much exactly and I think it will level off at 1.01 um, at probably could go to a 1.011 or something like this and um, so we're 90 minutes into the cold mesh and um, of course the 1.2 gravity points I mentioned is the original gravity so after boiling so from 1.01 to 1.02 I think it should, should go up to 1.02 during the boil but I will continue the cold mesh for another 30 minutes just to see what happens but I don't expect any more um, efficiency or not, not any more um, sugars being dissolved into the mesh. So I'm two hours into um, into my cold mesh and the gravity is not changing anymore it's now at 1.01 so um, yeah I'm going to start cooking really soon. So now our mesh is cooking and um, yeah I've added 13 grams of Chinook for bittering. So what we see here is that there's a lot of um, protein in the in the um, cooking beer. Um, I think it is um, actually some of the the starches that are actually washed from the mold um, while cold mashing and um, but this starch is not um, um, not transformed into sugars because the enzymes the alpha amylase and beta amylase enzymes that are responsible for breaking down the starch into sugars is denatured so quickly because I'm heating up um, from my uh, cold mesh temperature to cooking temperature so quickly um, and so all those starch is um, where well, builds up those proteins that we that I now see in my in my beer. That's at least this is at least my theory. <laughs> so I'm giving my aroma hops a little bit um, later than usual. Usually I give it at 15 minutes. I give it at five minutes with this brew because I forgot that um, because there are so many fermentable sugars in the beer, um, it will ferment very well, uh, very low and will be very dry and um, so I should have dialed back the bitter hops a little bit but I completely forgot about this so I gave my normal amount of bitter hops which is probably a little bit too much um, I give 13 grams I pr probably should have only given like 9 or 10 grams so um, keep this in mind that you dial back your bitter hops a little bit um, because you can expect to ferment it down very very lowly and get a very um, very dry beer anyway so you probably want to have a little bit less bitter. After finishing the boil I'll cool down the beer to fermentation temperatures of 20 degrees centigrade or 68 Fahrenheit. I put it into my fermentation vessel and store it in my fermentation room which is actually my office. I didn't reach uh, 1.02 gravity points but just 1.014 um, yeah, we will see what is going to happen with this sugar <laughs> during fermentation. So my cold mashed pale ale has finished fermentation now. It has been sitting for just four days in my fermentation chamber, also known as my office. And um, it started fermentation at, uh, at an original gravity of, of <coughs> um, 0.014 and has finished off at 0.004. So, it has fermented down quite a bit. It's not super dry. Um, and I'm going to dry hop it now for another four days. And then I um, yeah, can uh, try it and um, see what it actually will taste like. Um, I already tasted uh, the young beer and um, the color is nice. Uh, the malty character is there and the hop is there. Um, it, it's a little, it tastes, it, tastes a little less full than, an, uh, than a, a, a mashed beer, um, but it's, it's a nice beer. 
and I'm really excited to see um, what comes out of this little experiment. So, um, let's taste my beer. Um, this is my pale ale. It has been aged for two or three weeks in the keg now, which is usually enough to, um, to round out um, my pale ales. And um, I will now taste it with you. Um, there's all already a little bit less in this glass than, than before, because I already did the taste test for my German language video. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and it's definitely a beer. It ended, ended up, uh, it ended up having um, one ABV, one percent ABV, um, which is ex basically exactly what I expected, what I wanted from this beer. But I already have to tell you, it's not, uh, it doesn't really taste like a pale ale with less alcohol, um, because it's there's too much hops in it. I already told you when I was brewing that I I, I put um, too much hops into it. I wanted to dial back the hops actually, but I forgot about it. And um, frankly, I think you could um, brew with like probably a third of the hops you normally use because it has doesn't have a lot of um, malty body and um, and um, to counter the the taste and of the hops and the and the bitterness. Um, so it's very bitter. Um, and um, um, well, it's 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 okay. It's totally drinkable. But there's also like an I don't know. I don't know exactly the word. An astringent, astringent um, taste to it, which I think comes from the uh, specialty malt I used um, in this beer, the Munich uh, Two malt. Um, and um, yeah, overall, it's not. A, it doesn't taste like a pale ale, just with less, less alcohol. Um, I think. Um, this style of mashing um, works fine with um, relatively light beer, which aren't so hop forward, but which um, which are more um, yeah malt, which 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 rely on their maltiness more. Um, I probably, um, I think I will brew this. Uh, I will brew with this uh, uh, cold mash style again in the summer, but I will brew a saison. I think this will work really well. So no specialty malts, just Pilsner malt and um, not a lot of hops. This should work well. And um, you could probably try it with a Kölsch. And I'm really curious what a Weiss beer, what a Hefeweizen would taste like, brewed like this. It's, um, it's kind of funny because the Hefeweizen, the Weiss beer is, uh, relies so much on its huge body and um, yeah. But I wonder what this would taste like. So um, yeah, it's, um, it's a nice beer. It has one ABV, so I can drink it all day long, but unfortunately it doesn't taste like my, my Pele, which I like so much. Um, but that's, that's okay. It's, um, it, was just, um, I was, it was just a little experiment. And it worked out um, in the sense that I got a one ABV uh, beer out of it. And it didn't work out um, because I don't think um, those hop forward um, pale ales and IPAs will certainly not work um, with this with this style. Um, so next time I will try a Saison, much lighter beer, and I will tell you about how this will go probably in the summer, so stay tuned. So um, that's it for my first English language video. I don't know, do you want more of this? Um, is this like interesting for you? Are you a German language speaker who ended up watching my English video and absolutely hated it? Um, I also have a German language version of this cold mesh video. It's called Kaltmeischen. You will find it on my channel. So let, just let me, uh, uh, give me a comment here um, and I will think about doing more English language videos here from Bavaria, <laughs> which is a little bit odd, but um, yeah, I enjoy doing this. And so cheers. Um, if you want to try uh, the cold mashing thing, let me know. Uh, um, also let me know if you think it's total bullshit <laughs> you shouldn't do this and why would anyone want a low ABV beer. Um, I, I had fun brewing it. I, have, I will have fun drinking it and I have had fun making the video for you. So I hope to see you soon on my little 089 Braumeister. So this is basically, this is uh, the area code of Munich. So 089. No, it's, that's a little bit stupid. Um, hope to see you soon on my channel and bye, Prost and Servus.